Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, thank you for joining me yet again. In this video I'm going to be welding up a 8 inch header which has got some 3 inch um, branches or stabbings, whatever you want to call them, coming off. It's also got a couple of 2 inch sockets and also a 1.5 inch socket I believe. I think there's a half inch socket on there as well. If anyone saw my last video you'd know that I'm doing a giveaway for a stabilo level, some key rings and a nice little backpack from Stabila. If all you've got to do is like this video and subscribe and also leave a little comment telling me your favourite parts of this video and you'll be entered on the next time I upload. 5 gap but I think I've got a slightly smaller one on this as my filler doesn't quite want to get in there in some places. I didn't fab this up, this was fabbed up for me. I wish I could have fabbed it up because I could have made an even better video than just someone walking around a bit of pipe yet again. But there you go. I'm using a Bowler EMK6 rod. It's a ER70S6. They're really good rods and they really do allow you to push the root right in there. 150 to 160 amps. Uh, you will see I walk off in this video at some point because I was running a little bit too hot on one side with a slightly wider gap on one side where the branches were leveled out and it did start to like sink in a little bit too much for my liking so I had to turn it down I think I went down to about 140 145 or something like that I can't really remember but that is pretty much where I would like to be if it started pulling back well I'm using a number 8 gas lens with a that's an XL gas lens actually with a 2.4 millimeter tungsten that's just a normal foriated one and I'm running my gas at about 35 CFH. My amps for the route are about, personally I believe that Bola do some of the best welding rods in the industry. Um, they do some really really nice stick rods welding at those amps. Um, other than that everything else went really well in there. And when I start to cap it I will be using a 3.5 five um, millimeter rod again again that's another EMK6 ER70 S6 rod you can see there that I'm just using a six inch um, wire wheel I find it a lot quicker and a lot cleaner than using a wire brush and it gives you a better cleaner weld at the end of the day and that's what you're looking for every time and I always do this on every single pass that I run just in case there's a little bit of silica or anything like that you don't want to traipse on into your filler pass and your cap so otherwise you'll just end up with that nice little black dot sitting there and you don't really want that it's just annoying to watch through the well pool everybody knows what it's like and also if anybody's watching from the UK you know it is a killer welding in this heat so I've taken half a day for the past two days it's been getting over 40 degrees in the shop and it's really not worth damaging your health just to make a bit of money. You might as well work in the morning when it's nice and cool and then once it gets hot get yourself off. And obviously remember to stay hydrated, that's a main thing. Freeze a bottle of water the night before, take it to work with you. And away I'd like you go. to add that I'm not actually looking for big, big steps when I'm doing my filler pass. I like to keep it as tight as possible just to make sure that everything's burning in there and you're not going to get any inclusions or little pockets of air which you might miss because if you go over them when you're doing your cap they tend to explode on you, you might have got it before when you've um, welded over a tack and the tack's exploded that's because there's a little air pocket inside and once your heat gets to it it just explodes because you're releasing the air out of it and it goes all over your tungsten and makes a right mess and quite frankly it pisses everybody off it pisses me off a lot it's when someone just wants to do a quick tack and they don't really burn it in there properly it's so annoying when you've got to take your tungsten out cut a bit off the end of it because it's all I usually run my hot pass at pretty much the same as what I run the roots so about 140, 150 and you shouldn't really leave it more than 10 minutes between each run because sometimes it just gets too cold and then you've got to heat it all back up again and 
it's just not what you want to do with a weld really not with a root anyway you can cause it to suck back and you don't really want that so do it while it's hot same heat same amperage and you should be good to go I usually use a 3.5 most of the time to do my hot pass sometimes I might use a 3.2 depending how much room I've got there and if there's much build up to do to get it almost flush to the top I don't really like to do more than three runs on this thin, thin material it is schedule 40 but you don't really need a lot of runs in it to fill it up you might have noticed that once I've welded all the branches on one side I then turn the pipe around and weld the other ones because it's all contaminated and it's just a lot of time which could be saved just by putting in a proper tack and making sure that you're burning everything in and knowing 100% that you're not leaving any air pockets in there because if this was getting x-rayed the one that I'm making now isn't getting x-rayed but it, it just wouldn't wouldn't pass you'd have a hole in there you'd have to grind grind your cap out and you'd have to grind all the way through probably back to your route to be quite honest with you and it's just something an extra step that you don't want to do it takes time and it's a pain in the ass so basically what it does when you're welding one side of a pipe it'll tend to try and pull in that direction make the pipe bowed so if you turn it over and weld the other side it'll then pull against it and keep it nice and straight because you don't want to send the header out which is all bent and banana shaped it's just it's not really a thing that you want to do it's some professional it don't look good and it's going to be a pain when you come to put on your other flanges really because on this header the branches or stabbings they're almost staggered so once you want weld one side you really want to get onto the other one straight away just to try and keep a bit of that pulling away it doesn't take more than 10 minutes to run the route in four of these it's quite easy it's very very quick i weld quite hot so I do weld pretty quick, not as quick as I am in a video, but that's speeded up four times, so it looks quite cool, but that's not actually how fast I'm welding, obviously. Like I said before, and I can't stress it enough, you need to make sure that every time you do do a run a run, you run a run, that sounds funny, don't it? Um, every time you lay down a run, you want to cl clean off all the colour away from your weld, just getting it ready for the next one. It's better to do it while it's pretty warm because it comes off a lot easier if you're using a hand wire brush but with a wire wheel on a grinder you don't really have, you can leave it until it's really cold if you wanted to but you're not going to be doing that anyway because you want to run get that hot pass in there really quick. And also if you run in your hot pass first and then do your route on the other side it's going to be too much heat on one side for the root side to then pull against it so you want to do a root turn it and root again then go back to the first one first side of the pipe and then put in your hot pass as long as you're quick enough to get there within the 10 minute time frame because that's really all you should be leaving it and then go back and so on so then you do your hot pass turn it do your hot pass on the other side and go back to do your cap and then turn it again once more just to do your other cap and it'll keep it will keep your head a nice and straight exactly how it should be and it won't cause you any problems when putting your flanges on and leveling it up when you need to because when you come back up the other side if it's too hot so you go down from the top of the pipe that bit will be, look okay but when you go to come back up to the centre of the pipe again that's where you're going to find that you're struggling and it's going to want to start falling back on you if you just go from root to cap straight away I know some people that can probably do it and probably say that you don't need to wait but I I know there's a lot of people that like to let everything cool right down before they run another pass and don't get me wrong I'm not saying weld it straight away as soon as you've laid down your route you can do if you're going to be quick about it but I, I would personally leave it about two to three minutes minimum before you welded it just give yourself that little ten minute window to try and get your hot pass in as well Sometimes it can be hard if you've got a lot of these to do, so you wouldn't weld them all at once, you'd probably weld two or three, then go back to the first one, weld them, get your hot pass in, then you can let that cool right down for your cap, because it's a lot. I found it's a lot easier when you're welding your cap when it's almost cold than when it's warm, you get a lot better control with the, with the puddle and the edges, especially when you're welding around a bit of pipe which is down and then up again doing a branch like this. I personally would, because you're going to get a better quality weld we're not looking to try and get some half-assed weld which isn't up to scratch 
doesn't matter if it's being x-rayed or not that's exactly what you need to be aiming for whether you whether you're a pipe welder or a structural welder welding exhaust pipes because at the end of the day some of these some welders out here throw down some absolute terrible shit I'm not gonna lie and sorry for my language but it's ridiculous if you can look at your own welding and say you would buy that then you can probably say you've done a good weld because personally most most welders are their own worst critics so if they wouldn't p pay money for it themselves then it's obviously a terrible weld and half the time they will weld it again but you do get the la lazy people that will just send it out, put a bit of paint on it fill in any holes we've got with the paint and away it goes and it's quite sad really because some of these welds could potentially put someone else's life in danger and that's definitely something you don't want to have over your conscience for the rest of your life is it? it certainly isn't for me when I'm going to do my capping and I'll probably leave it about 15 minutes before I actually put a cap in it just so it cool down just to a nice comfortable level for me and then I use my 3.2 uh, filler rod ER70S6 again by Bowler it's called EMK6 I believe and they're really 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 good at giving you a nice co consistent weld pull they don't melt under pressure they still keep keep the tensile strength as you're pushing in a little bit. I lay I like to lay down a wire and give it a little push as I pass over the middle of the weld when I'm doing my weave like this. It just helps to build the weld up as you're going if you're just adding that little bit more. I've noticed with these rods it keeps the colour a lot more so you're not ending up with a really br um, grey weld. It's keeping everything nice and pretty exactly what you want to want do. For my amps, I usually turn it up to about one, between 165 and 180, depending on how hot or cold it was to start off with. So say if it's just warm to the touch, it's not burning my hand when I hold onto it, and I can hold my hand there for five seconds without it burning me, I'll probably weld it about 160 to 165. But then if it's um, really cooled down, say if I've come, left it with the hot passes in and coming the next day to weld it, I'll probably turn it up to about. 180 and somewhere around there, maybe a little bit cooler, 175, but that usually works pretty good on this sort of pipe. You might have noticed that I don't actually start walking the cup until I get onto my capping run. That's because there's not nothing there to walk on, and my cup sits on both the branch and the 8 inch pipe at the same time, so it doesn't even touch the well to start off with. That look, that's why it just looks like I'm just giving it a wiggle most of the time. So I'm going to leave you to watch the rest of the video and I'll come back with you once it gets towards the end. Hope you enjoy it. I'll leave you with a little bit of music so it doesn't get too boring for you.
and I'm back. I hope you all enjoyed that video. I know looking at some of these welds now again, they're not perfect, but no weld is. See, I've got a little bit of silica in one of them. But it just goes to show, it doesn't matter how long you've been doing it, you're still going to get mistakes. And just keep trying to get better and better and better each day you go on. So thank you for watching. If you could like and subscribe, that would be great. I'll see you next time. Thank you.